Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Icy. Welcome to the Sit Down uh, page. This is 21 Questions. I'm the host and the founder of the Sit Down. Welcome another week as we do our in depth, uh, what can we call it? In depth interviews, yeah, that we do on Insta Live every single week. We couldn't do last week, uh, we had to reschedule, uh, but we're here. So if you want to check out any of our previous um, episodes, jump on our IGTV jump on our YouTube channel through the link in our bio. Um, we've got like 70 plus episodes with some amazing people. So you can check that out, man. Check it out. Um, tonight we've got a great interview with uh, Michelle Marby Davies, a food blogger, content creator, and all round, I'd say, motivator and encourager. All right, so we're going to kind of unpack her story a bit. Um, but let me know, how is everyone doing, man? It's... um. Interesting in time in London, yeah? We've had sun, sleet, snow, um, energy prices are going up. Um, what's that thing you've got to do? You've got to send your meter reading, reading by today. In the comment section, let me know if you sent your meter reading. <laughs> let me know who you're with and let me know if you sent your meter reading. It's a madness right about now. VAT is going up. So... We do things like this for you to, I guess, escape for a couple of hours, man. It's a madness that's happening in the UK, in the world in general. So we provide this platform for you to kind of escape for an hour or so and just just be, man. It's a madness that's happening. But let me know how you guys are. I would love you to answer this question in the comment section. Something that made you smile this week. What is something that made you smile this week, I would love to know. Put it in the comment section. I want to say hello to Shana, big up to Stephanie, Adonga, Earl, uh, the banjo, Thea Banjo, uh, Sarah King, big up to you. Hope you are well. Um, but yeah, let me know something that made you something that made you smile this week. Let me know. Let me know. Um, if you want to get involved in our events, we have events every two to three months, and uh, our last event was with Shola Ama. Uh, the legendary songstress um, but if you want to get involved in our events you want to come down to one of our events please come on down man um, you can do so through the link in our bio it will say sign up for priority tickets you can get your priority tickets to our events before anyone else okay 30 minutes before everyone else um, and we're in the process of getting our next guest together and so we'll announce the date um, but if you sign up for our priority tickets, you can get them 30 minutes before everybody else gets them. And that's, that's handy when they sell out. So um, make sure you do that. Click the link in our bio. Press sign up. Uh, Adongo, you said March coming to an end. <coughs> Why? Why March coming to an end? Let me know. <laughs> but yeah, I can't, I can't lie. We did see a bit of sunshine. Was it this week or last week? Um... The sunshine was shining. The sunshine was shining. Uh, but everyone that's joined us, I'm asking you something that made you smile this week. Let me know. Something that made you smile this week. Put it in the comment section. Uh, big up Michelle in the building. Um, let's, I'm coming over to you. Let's get cracker lacking. Uh, how do I do this again? In back. Uh, cool. Something that made you guys smile. Something that made you smile. Uh, this week, let me know. Let me know. Rico, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you, man. Hi, Michelle. What's up? Evening. How you doing? Look at your background, man. You're you're oppressing me. <laughs> Never. Listen, I was so confused. I was like, okay, where do I sit for this? Because I've not done a live in so long. Can you hear me, please? Sorry, first of all. Yeah, a bit low. A bit low. <laughs> oh, you're here, bud. Okay. Is this better? Sorry. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, okay, fab. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so this is not a hotel? No, that's so funny. Um, <laughs> someone did ask my friend, like, because I think he came, he was here for dinner, and they were like, oh, what's that place that you guys rented, like, that you hired? Was it a studio? And he was like, no, that's, that's her space. Um, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> this is how, how you be spacing. You? I am good. I'm tired, but I'm good. So I'm good. Listen, Long day. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to throw your question back to you. What's something that's made you smile? 
Um, well, I took my daughter to the science museum today, so that was cool. Oh, nice. Um, so just yeah, just just mm. just chilling with her and uh, yeah, just watching her smile and different at different things and get involved in the activities. Yeah, that was cool, man. That's, That's cool. lovely. <laughs> That's cool. What's something that made you smile? This week, mm -hmm. well, be this week because today, <laughs> today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this week, what's made me smile? My little sis hit ten k on Instagram. Devo Studio, she's dancing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just amazing. That's made me smile because yeah, I, I, I can. I know we're gonna come onto content creation at some point, but I remember moments where she was just figuring it out, trying to find her feet, and like. Yeah, it makes me smile. It makes my heart happy. So yeah, that's, that's I, was, what I, like. I was on her page the other day actually. Oh, yeah, really? I was. On her page. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I don't know. I can't remember how I ended up on it, but I was just like, "This is silent nice. screaming in the background." So I was like, "This is some. <laughs> this is good." I can't remember if I followed, but yeah, it was just like, "Yeah, this is yeah. good stuff." So. It's, it's amazing. Like it's it's really hard to find your voice and kind of make the effort to show up Come in on. a space where there's just so many versions of what you're trying to do. So. I will always applaud that. Like, I will always applaud that consistency. So shout out to you, Debs. Big up to Debs <laughs> in the building. Plug, plug, plug. Yes. Um, uh, um, what was I going to say? Okay, cool. So, 21 questions. 21 <laughs> questions? Sorry. I don't know why I'm decided to wrap that. Oh, sorry! <laughs> uh, you've got 21 questions or more. You've got one pass card. You can use that at any time. Okay. Um, I didn't say that in the email, did I? No, because I'm like, oh, these, these got rules. Okay. <laughs> you got one pass card. Um, in the past, I think it's 75. I can't remember what number we're at. In okay. the past 75 episodes, only one person has ever used it. So. Okay. I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> let's, see, let's see how it goes. No, no phone a friend? Mm, that's an interesting one. What would you do? <laughs> My friends would disgrace me on this piece of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, big up to everyone that has joined us 21 questions with michelle davies okay. um let's have some fun so we're gonna start Woo -woo. off light work um with your intro questions i'll call okay. them intro questions so <clears throat> well, no the way you're laughing is making me so nervous because if you're laughing at the question like this i don't know this might be my past Okay, what's one purchase that you regret? <laughs> I was going to say hinge. Okay, wait, purchase like... <laughs> so it could be clothing, it could be uh, a kitchen, uh, you know, piece of equipment, whatever. Could be a trip, could be a dinner. This is like forever, ever? Ever, ever. So something you look at now and you're like, ah, that was a rubbish purchase. I regret it. Sorry, that is taking me so long because <laughs> I don't, but I take so long to decide before I okay. buy things. I mean, yeah, I've probably thought about the thing I want for weeks and weeks and weeks before I buy it. So it's... Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. And um, five, four, Okay, the middle, leaf, the middle leaf thing that I killed. I don't regret it. Okay, no, yeah, let me say I regret it. Um, I didn't know how to care for it properly, so buying it was probably not yeah what was it what was it so it's a plant it's like this really instagrammable plant it's a fiddle leaf uh -huh. fig i love okay. the way it looks but that thing just that, that thing died <laughs> on me like wow <laughs> uh greatest fear my greatest fear wow not fulfilling what i know i'm capable of mm. hmm. that's, a, that's a one for a lot of people uh who's your biggest cheerleader biggest cheerleader Probably when she was alive, my mum. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what one quote do you live by or a mantra that you just live by? Um, I have nothing to lose, nothing to prove, and everything mm. to gain. Mm, where's that from? Who's that from? Um, it was by Lisa Nichols. She's um, kind of like a motivational coach, um, and her story is really powerful. Like, it's the one where the lady said she wrote a check, she would, she would go to her, um, okay. her bank and deposit each time and they would ask like, what are you saving for? And it was like, she was like, I'm funding my dream. And then she wrote a check to herself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, her story is like, 
a really amazing book. Um, okay. It's Lisa Nichols. Lisa Nichols. Oh, yeah. I like that. Um, what piece of cooking equipment has added the most, or the, has been the most beneficial to your cooking that you would my, recommend? My KitchenAid mixer. I almost cried when I bought it <laughs> because I didn't, understand, I didn't understand. I think they range typically, they're about 500, but I've had right. it for over seven years. So, Whoa. Yeah. And, and give us that plug that again, what's it called? The KitchenAid. Um, so it's a KitchenAid mixer. It's like a stand mixer. It just saves you standing there physically holding the mixer to mix. Like you can leave it, do what you're doing. Um, so typically I use it for cakes. I use it when I used to make wedding cakes, but also you can make pound of yam in it. So that's wonderful. <laughs> it comes in, it comes in, it comes in. Comes, Double comes purpose. In. <laughs> Mostly purpose. Uh, what's the first, what is the first and the last hour of your day look like? First hour of my day, um, meditation with the Calm app. So I do guided meditation because my mind is too busy to just do silent meditation. So mm. guided meditation, typically journaling, scrolling on my phone. Um, when I journal, I just, I don't, there are no prompts. I just literally write what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. Um, so about two or three pages. And then last, last hour of the day, currently typically trying to drive myself off the sofa because i've intentionally not put a tv in my room but that now means that i'm like on the sofa watching whatever it is i'm watching um but yeah i wind down go through my nighttime routine sometimes i read and sometimes i just get straight into bed yeah what time do you sleep oh lately it's just been a hot mess so um <laughs> maybe like 12 <laughs> 11 12 11 to 1 is the range but an ideal for me would be 10. Yes. 10, okay. I know, grandma, but yeah. It's <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, a country you would love to live in right now? Live in? Mm. Somewhere in the Caribbean, probably like somewhere slow paced, like maybe the Bahamas, not, mm. not too busy. Yeah, yeah. Probably so, so are you someone who, um, going from a busy lifestyle to a slow down pace, can you adapt to that slow down pace or would you still find it too slow? You'd want to do you, what you create your own business. As long as I'm able to create, I can adapt. Like as long as I'm able to express my creativity in some way, or I love creating things and I love starting projects and stuff like that. I'm always great at finishing. But um, as long as I can do that, I think I'd be okay in a slower paced environment. Slow paced, yeah. yeah. Um, if I gave, no, if you won £10,000 right now on the radio, what would you do? On the radio? Yeah. On the show, right, right now, on this, name. on this live right now. Oh, okay. Well, I can't say the wrong name because then people know me. Um, what would I do with the money? Mm -hmm. I would travel and I would, oh, okay. It's either between travel or a timepiece. A timepiece or a okay. luxury handbag, one of those. What time piece? What pieces are you into? Um, ideally a Rolex. If I was going to invest for reselling, then I would say an AP. But yeah, mm. for me to keep, yeah, but a Rolex probably. Mm, I love watches. Yeah. Mm. Really, what's your favourite? Um, I'm a. Do you know what? I'm a. I'm a. I'm a Rolex. I'm a Rolex and a Vita guy. At the moment. Okay. I need the new Vita. If um, anybody want to give me that. If, if listen, plug, shout out. William. William. <laughs> <laughs> the new Ada is coming out first of April, ladies and gentlemen. Go get that. Um, last few. Um, what do you do for escapism? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you escape? Escapism. I try not to. That's like been my, wow. I think that was the bulk of 2021 for me, like trying to figure out how to stay present and mindful even when I don't like where I am life-wise. But for escapism, I'd probably travel. That would be my go-to. Mm. But the, it was becoming an expensive <laughs> escapism. So I was like, my dear, we have to figure out how to sustain it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. true. Um, when you daydream, what do you daydream about? Being the best version of myself. Like the life, what that life would look like where <sighs> there are no limits from my mind to what I create. Mm -hmm. Literally, like I just... I can taste it and it's just like, oh, get out of your own way, Michelle. But yeah, that would, yeah. that's what I daydream about. Right. 
um, and your greatest life lesson of 2022 so far? Wow, 2022, 2022. Because we're already hitting April. Sometimes you are your greatest obstacle. Like, and if you just move out of the way, the limits are endless. How do you move out of the way? By taking small steps each time, not by trying to do like a, a big move or conquer the whole mountain. Um, someone I follow, Matty James said, you, always, you have to David your Goliath one, one at a time, or you have to eat the elephant one bite at yeah. a time. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. That was your, that was your quick fire round. Light okay. Round. How, how did that feel? That was good. That was like, I was like, oh, okay, we're going to think on our feet. But yeah, no, it's great. It's great. Um, I always like for people to introduce themselves because okay. everybody has a perception of who they are. Hmm. And even our accol accolades don't really paint a picture of who we see ourselves as. Yeah. So I want to, for you, for people who've never heard about you or what you do, how would you introduce introduce who you are not what you do introduce who you are who i am i am i had to go through like a, a bullet point list i would say i, I don't know what this means specifically in terms of when i use it as a word so this year marks 20 years since i've been in the uk i actually came here when I was 10, after my 10th birthday. So I was gonna say like, I'm an immigrant, but I know how that affects me in terms of how I navigate life mm. as an adult, as someone living in the UK, um, trying to stay in tune with my culture and things I love about it. And yeah, so first of all, um, immigrant, Nigerian, um, someone who is, resilient and trying to navigate life hmm. as I want to say as best as possible but that's not the word I'm looking for trying to maximize this life experience like trying to be as present as possible and maximize the time that I have here so hmm. um yeah someone who's journeying through life and trying to wrestle with the ugly sides of it, as well as embrace the beauty of it at the same time. So, yeah. Believe that. Yeah. Believe that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not alone. That is a, that's a great introduction. That's, that's everybody watching this, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I love that there wasn't an emphasis on what you, um, what you do, because it's just, I feel like I'm similar to, to a couple of people probably watching, one of those people who, my hand is in many pots, and sometimes it's hard when you often are defined by what you do. Like when you introduce yourself, well, what do you do? Like da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, it can be easy to feel like you have to put yourself in this box and stay mm -hmm. there. I mean, yeah, I love that. If, if anything, I'll just say I'm someone who's creative and, and loves exploring different expressions of what's inside of me. 100%. 100%. I'm, I, think I'm, I like that. I think I'm going to use that. I like that because I'm, I'm going to say my... I um. What is the word? There's a certain word I want to use. I'm a, I'll just use this. I'm a pipe. So I'm, I'm a creative pipe. Yeah. God gives me ideas mm. to channel through me mm -hmm. to then connect with people. Yep. But that can change and that can be music and that can mm -hmm. be a host, that can be photography, that can be badges. Yep. It took me a very, very long time to understand that. Mm. when I was doing music I, I was always scared that God might one day um, say oh you have to stop oh, uh, because, because I couldn't see outside music so what was yeah. who am I outside yeah. being icy or, or commissioning yeah. you know so um, what I've learned is that for me I'm just a creative pipe and yeah. it gives me ideas channels them through the pipe yeah. and then it might be something next year something different yeah. And once you, I think once I, I realised that, I was happy with that. Yes. I was like, There's yes, cool. So much freedom that comes from that. I was talking to, um, oh, I don't remember who the other day. You know, <laughs> now that we're at home, well, I'm at home more often, I find myself like just random FaceTime calls that you wouldn't be able to, to typically take like pre-pandemic. And then I just yeah. mix up conversations. But um, I was talking to a friend and I think she, she was trying to think about transitioning in terms of her content, like, going from, let's say, like, a heavy focus on music or worship mm. 
to like wanting to share more life stuff, like renovation, home stuff. That's cool. And I, it was this question of like, okay, will people accept the change? Like, will people accept what it is that I have to offer because it's different? Mm. And I remember I kind of had the same where I was like, well, I share food recipes. Like, how can I just start sharing about hosting? Um, and it's just like the analogy that came to me was like a tree is useful to multiple people mm. in different seasons. <laughs> what it looks like and like in some seasons where there's no fruit, someone can look at it and be like, okay, well, that's not useful. But it's still like maybe a bird can still perch on the branches like at some sure. point or if when it bears fruit, like that's going to feed someone, that's going to be nurturing to someone. So it's like instead of putting yourself in this box of like, I only am useful or accepted when I'm in my fruit bearing stage or, you know, like whatever it is, it's like, no, like there's beauty when it's just leaves or when it's fruit, when it's flowers or when it's nothing on there. Like it's your usefulness isn't dependent on things looking a particular way. And I've really, really struggled with coming to terms with that. But mm. like you said, it's freeing when you're able to literally take yourself out of the box and just be like, no, I'm a pipe, I'm a vessel, I'm, it can be multiple things yeah. in one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And you just reach, you connect with more, more people. And, and I guess the, the purpose becomes a bit more rounded as opposed to too narrow. Because if she starts to do renovation stuff, oh my gosh, like, you know how many people want to try and renovate their kitchen or yeah. renovate their, and they just didn't know that you know how to do that. So sometimes we're robbing people if we don't just, um, just do something different if you want to. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because you're allowed. You, yeah. You're, like, on, it's interesting, like, on my, um, uh, my, pro my, my personal page, mm -hmm. I changed my name from IC Music, that, which has been forever, wow. to IC The Host. Yeah. That was a one split moment where yeah. I was like, no, I don't want to be named, I, not that I don't want to be known by my music name, but yeah. I'm doing something different now. Yeah. I want to reflect that there. Mm -hmm. And so like different people messaged me and like, oh, they said, um, oh, well done. I thought, like, well done. Well done for, for changing the name. That was a good, yeah. a good look. I was like, for me, it wasn't a big deal, but yeah. it, like you said, it showed that there's an audience waiting for different changes that you make, and they're ready to embrace it if you are. And there's permission to pivot. Like you can on. give someone else permission to say, like, this is okay for this season. I can do this in the next. Like, yeah, and yeah. sometimes, yes, we need to give ourselves permission, but sometimes other people's examples that is the permission that we need to be able to yeah. pivot and just be like, look, it's a different thing for this season onto the next. So yeah, hundred percent. And thank you for coming to our TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that what you said, permission to pivot. That's, that's, that's. That could be your next live session you do. You do. That's permission to pivot. That's, that's Cause that's, that is the one word that I heard from God mm. top end. Was it 2018 or 2019? Like pivot, but I didn't mm. understand what that meant. It was like pivot, 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 mm -hmm. and it was pivot towards <clears throat> pivot towards pouring all your energy into the sit down. Wow! But I was just about. I think I just dropped my album, mm. and I was like, "Huh?" But I found after I dropped that album, which is my greatest al album ever. Oh wow! Well, yeah. After that, I have <laughs> lived. Really. I, Music creative juice, there is none. Yeah. There's none. All of it is in, uh, in, in the sit down. And I think it's because creativity is fluid. And it it's, it's like water and it can be, you know, applied to anything. And I think just, that's just what happened once that pivot action happens. Do you, do, do you <clears throat> wrestle with that... Um like in terms of the creative juices for music, because mm. I'm, I'm sure it's something that you love, like music, expressing yourself in that yeah. way. Um, did, did, how, how did that impact you? Like, did you struggle with that, the quote unquote loss of that or? No, that's the weirdest yeah. thing. I, wow. I, I just, and I think that's again, this idea of, um, someone said it in a tweet, mm. but in, a, in relation to a different context, they were talking about when you are given an audience, 
especially from God, you are lent that audience. Wow. The audience is loaned to you. Yeah. To deposit onto them what is mm-hmm. needed at the time. Yeah. The gift, the gift that you're given. Yeah. And I think the same with our gifts and the audience that comes with them. It's given to you on loan. It's, it doesn't belong to you. And yeah. the, gift, the gift doesn't belong to you. So yeah. you've got to be willing to pivot to whatever gift or the same gift in different variation um because there's people that are waiting like you're the answer and the prayer to so many people in different yeah. things and to pivot is sometimes to answer somebody's prayer so somebody somewhere might have like you said we need the permission that yeah. they can try something different even though they've been known for doing something their whole life they can try something. And it can be a strong reminder that, because I think, actually, no, I think it, it works both, because I was going to say, maybe, when I think of these examples, like I'm thinking, oh, as someone who used to lead worship, let's say, mm-hmm. like, when we talk about gifts, so, and I've got, not controversial views, but like in terms of purpose and giftings and the way we, the way we use those words and what we mean by them, I think mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard to even consider pivoting, because a lot of us, whether out of our own choice and maybe as a response to how we see others responding to our gifts, we make those gifts our identity. Wow. So it's just like, of course you're gonna struggle to pivot because to you, your worth and your identity is tied up in this gift. And why I say your response to it, I don't know about every other gift, but let's say, especially one where you're on stage, whether you're a worship leader, an MC, whatever it is, there is a response that comes from that. Mm. Like, yes, you don't create for the validation, but when it does come, it can sometimes cause you <laughs> to like, you know, like, okay, let me do more of this. And, you're stable. and you know, it, it can affect even the way you lead worship. Like sometimes, even the way people preach sometimes, I'm just like, <laughs> it, a lot of it is affected by the way an audience or a congregation of people respond. And then you make this gift your identity. Even with making wedding cakes, like it was like, well, how can I stop? Mm. How can I stop? Like I couldn't understand how I could stop. I just couldn't. Because to me, what I was applauded for, (laughs) where I was celebrated was the person that makes wedding cakes. It would bring people joy when I would bring cakes, even if it was for birthdays. So my identity was very much tied to what I do. And it's, it's a really hard concept when you feel like pivoting, when it's enough, when, 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 when that season is finished. If you haven't done the work of separating who you are from what you do, what you give, that pivot is just, it's, it's so, it's, it's much harder than it ever needed to be. So but I don't also think that we are taught, we are taught that enough. Yeah, so, it's not, that's true. Yeah. That's true, you're ready, you're ready to, and I, I remember I had a friend that said to me once, went to Portugal, very close friend. She said to me, you know, you don't have to do music, you know? Wow. You know, you know, you can, there's a, you know that you can, you're allowed to stop it. Wow. And the time she said it, I was like, are you crazy? Like, yeah. that's, like why, why would that ever happen? When would yeah. That? But that stuck in my mind. And you, know, yeah. you can apply it to so many things, you know. You, you know you don't have to always make cakes. Yeah. wedding cakes do you know that you don't always have to be on stage you, you, don't, you know so and it's just like you said it's that idea of being more than the thing everybody knows you for yes can i be more yeah and you can because i'm it would be made to be multiple things to multiple people so if we just stick with that one thing um and it's not that it's not to say that when you find that gift and you find that pathway you know, never come off it. But if you ever feel a pool anywhere else, take time to maybe explore it. You can yeah. explore, yeah. yeah. You can explore, yeah, you're allowed. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, I can talk about this forever and ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yes, back to, so, yeah, back to turn on questions. So, um, that was our second tech talk. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask, so, you came over here when you were 10. So, growing up in Lagos, um, what are your fondest, fondest like memories? Sunday afternoons. Like, and, and I don't know if it's because I, I joked about this on the reel before. So it's, my favorite thing about Sundays previously was the fact that after service, on different Sundays, it would be, 
it was a foreign concept to me to come to the UK and everybody went home after service. I just didn't understand, <laughs> like after church service. I was like, where's everybody going? Yeah. Like, it's very much, let's all mind our business and we all go home. But in Lagos, it was like, whose house are we going to? Who's hosting? Who's cooking? Like there was mm. always food in abundance. And I was saying it's funny to me because obviously service times in Lagos, I don't know if you've been to church in Lagos. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's probably better now. But when I was there, <laughs> <laughs> Like, we would get there from, like, let's say 7, 8, and we would definitely leave about 2. Because you would do the little bit for the choir members, then my parents were in the choir, then they, they would do Sunday school, then church service. And I remember, like, sneaking out. Yeah, Sundays were my favourite, because we'd sneak, me and a couple other friends would sneak out, get gala, which is, like, sausage roll, um, Fanta, Coke, which doesn't taste anything like the Fanta or Coke. <laughs> So, like, it was just full of a lot of food and community. Nice. Um, and that's just, it's the highlight for me. Like, I, I also wonder in hindsight, like, am I romanticizing what that was like? Because mm -hmm. were we out every Sunday? Probably not. But from what I can remember, that was the highlight for me. Like, literally, who's cooking what? It wasn't an extravagant meal. It was probably meals that were, like, I don't know. Swallow like pounded yam, whatever it was that was quite, like normal for us, but that was fun. Like it was really hard for me to come to the UK and everybody mm. the business. I was like, where y'all go? Like church friends, y'all going home? Like I don't want to stay. Yeah. And what was that kind of culture shock like coming over here, if there was one? Oh my god, the perfect <laughs> culture shock. Because I came here and then I did like three months in America. I was mm -hmm. meant to live there with my aunt, and then I ended up not because my dad wasn't going to come and I was daddy's girl at the time. So yeah. Um, but there's just so much, like even from milk, like milk and cheese, milk and cheese wasn't everything. Food was the culture shock for me. Cause mm. by the time I got to school and it was lasagna, I said, what, there's layers of, I don't understand. And then the cold <laughs> meals, like sandwiches, like I just, <laughs> I'm used to hot food. Most food in Nigeria was hot. Yeah. Like, why are you guys eating cold, cold food? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> The food was probably the biggest culture shock. There was cheese in everything. Mm. They'll make spaghetti, but they will put cheese on top. I said, "That's right." <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, was... and and particular uh, words. That was actually. Let me just be honest. Oh, really? Growing up in Lagos, so like, if you, I didn't. There was no such thing as number two. Like, if you needed to use the toilet for that purpose, you would say S H I T. So okay. I was coming like over here, like, oh yeah, I need to. No, you can't say that. You have to say like number two. So probably like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that was yeah, that was a shocker. Yeah. Um, and what was your relationship with your parents growing up like when you was younger? From from what I remember, my dad was my primary caregiver. My mum was the one that was kind of working in banking, like nonstop. Like he was able to do business and do contracts and whatever. And I was just like attached at the hip to him. Like I was very much, this is me and this is my dad. Like we're always kind of around each other. I think during my teenage years, yeah, <laughs> I put them through it. Like I wasn't wild, but I was just very stubborn. Mm. Um, so Why? we had, say that again. Why were you stubborn? I, I just, some of it is probably as a method of trying to protect myself from certain things that I experienced. Mm. And some of it is probably just my nature. Like, I think I am the person that will question me, like, why? Why are we doing that? Or no, I don't want to, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I went to an all-girls school. So I just think there was a certain things, I just, certain stresses I didn't need to give them, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, wow, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've mentioned, I mean, you've mentioned before how your mum would, you and your mum would butt, head, butt heads in that kind of time. Oh, and God. you said um, the way that she used to think discipline in you just didn't work. And I wanted to ask you, then, what do you feel would have been the best way to discipline you at that time? I think probably reasoning with me. Right. And it's, it's, I'm able to articulate that now because I understand myself a bit better like I am someone who is very inquisitive I need to logically understand why and how things work mm. but that's just not 
Yeah. Now that manifests itself in trying to understand like life and why we're here and philosophical topics. Blah, blah, blah. But as a kid, you just look like a rebellious Nigerian teenager because that's not the norm in terms of, I'm not saying it, that was the case in every household, mm. but for most Nigerian kids, it was a case of you're supposed to be seen and not heard. Or if you question too much, it's like, you just want to be stubborn. And it's like, no, I just want to understand. So mm. I think probably understanding more of her life experiences and why she was, asking me to do or not to do certain things, I think that would have probably gone, that would have probably worked better when it, it came to me. So, That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, for you personally, you know, you, you spoke about this a couple of times, 5th of January 2014, mm -hmm. losing your mum. What... <laughs> like it's that was 2014 it's 2022 yeah. what's that oh wow how yeah. many years is that eight years eight years yeah what has that been like in 2022 in 2022 um someone was actually so mother's day just passed and typically mm. for me that's um my day it's a roller coaster. So typically, we start out in January, and from December, I think I'm yet to read this book called "The Body Keeps the Score," but I do think there's probably an element of like, yes, mentally, I can understand that she was ill and she was really deteriorating, like health-wise. Let's say December into January, but then she passed away in January. But I think there's probably is it a physiological like there's just I just go into a space typically of feeling really low um typically like struggling with depression but this year covid i kind of had covid so that didn't actually give me time <laughs> it really sad. covid was like i'm gonna show you pepe um <laughs> but this is probably the first year where i haven't gone as deep mm. in the depth of the negative emotions on landmarks so like mother's day wasn't Okay, I was just kind of like, mm. and I was able to send out messages to, to mothers in my life, like to my friends who are mothers and stuff and just pulled up, you know, um, and aunts who are mother figures. Typically, I would just kind of isolate myself and end up just in a little bit of a shell. Um, I think I still have, so the landmark moments, I don't go as deep, well, I haven't gone as deep this year. I don't know what my 30th birthday is going to feel like, but on random days, it still hits me. It hits me as deep as the landmark days from previous years would. Right. So okay. it's yeah. this level of shock where I'm just like, I could be doing the most random thing. Like I could be settling into bed or like just doing something mm -hmm. around the house and I'm like, whoa, you're not here. Like I kind of, I remember and I'm like, whoa. And I, sometimes it will slip out of my mouth like, well, how could you leave? Like it, it sounds like it's stuff yeah. that you'd hear people say like I was in a movie, but literally I'm just like, you're not here. Like, it's almost mm. like you keep realising. And I'm grateful in comparison to the first few years where that shock and that realisation, it was horrific because it was more in terms of, like, dreams where I'd be, like, in the dream, she's alive. But then I'd wake up and I'd realise, like, that, it's just the worst. And, like, mm. I just think, how did I physically go out and talk to people or go to the office during those periods? Because literally, it feels like a vivid dream of, no, she's here, life is normal. And then I wake up, and as I wake up, I remember, and I'm like, oh, wait, like, it's just, it's a lot um, before 7 a.m. So I'm grateful not to be in that space, but there are still moments where right now I'm just like, damn, like, you're not here to see me blossom. Like, I feel like I'm just coming into my own as a woman. Like, like why are you not here type of thing? So, yeah, yeah. Ebbs and flows. Ebbs and flows. With you and your dad, what um, you talked about sometimes the the strain that would put on you two during uh, the illness. Yeah. How has it been now? From the eight years mm. now, how was your you two's relationship? You know what? I feel like because I've gone so deep into this space of trying to find. I don't subscribe to the, I think people say this out of comfort, like everything happens for a reason. <laughs> There's probably proof to that to some, to some extent, but I don't, I don't think it's the most helpful thing to say. What's the reason then? Tell me the reason. 
exactly. I don't think it's the most helpful thing, but it's just something we've, we've mm. become accustomed to saying. But I do subscribe to the notion of you can find meaning from any situation. Like you can ascribe meaning of your own to any situation. You can, you can let it guide your life in whatever way you choose. Um, and I feel like I've gone down that path of really trying to find meaning from it and, and or maybe ascribe meaning to it. Mm, I like that. Um, That's a, there's a big difference. Yes, yeah. Ascribe. Yes. And I think maybe also partly because of gender and probably moving away from what my culture expects of me. I've embraced grief fully. I've become really vocal about how I am, how I am, where I am, going to therapy, da, 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 da. I don't know that, he, not I don't know, he hasn't done the same. So even when I say gender, as a Nigerian man, mm. I'm like, where is your space to be really vocal about how you're doing? And I feel like we would be able to connect about it on a much deeper level if he was able to walk that path himself. Mm as I've been walking mine and we, we kind of meet in the middle. So it's, yeah, it's not something we discuss a lot. It's not something I know how to discuss with him because I am very aware, like I said, my formative years, okay, yes, they were in Lagos, but for the bulk, I grew up here, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm accustomed to in terms of sharing, in terms of being able to name emotions, even in terms of what I have access to True. online, right? Um, it's just a different experience. I know it, it's a very different experience for him. So yeah 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 i hear that i hear that. um how has the learning from <clears throat> the things that you gained from your mom the things that you, you gained from your father how have they informed how you would like to parent if you if you want to have children when you wow children? um I, I think about this a lot <laughs> sorry because um for me I was trying to, I asked myself the question, like, what's the wildest dream you have for yourself? And beyond, like, self-actualization and things that I, I want to, quote-unquote, give birth to and that are not children, I think about creating a family legacy that's really intentional, like, really, whether it's traditions and not, not a legacy that's, like, me dictating what I want my children to, to do, mm -hmm. but equipping them to be the best and fullest versions of themselves. So even when I think about parenting now, and I actually, I, I think my parents did this well with me. So when I think about parenting now, I often think about the phrase that says, um, your children come through you and not from you. And um, the person mm -hmm. that's like, I can't remember what TV show, but um, it was kind of pointing to this idea that Sometimes I think parents have this approach of like, my children come from me, so I must mold them, even culturally, not to disgrace me or to, to do you know I mean, when they think about family lineage and, and legacy, it's like, yeah. you've come from me, so, <laughs> so don't. you must uphold this, right? Whereas if it's like, they come through you, mm. you're just here to kind of be a guiding hand and a soft place to fall for them as they navigate life. So... Mm. I think my parents did a good job of that with me because my mom was just like, in terms of uni, like, do what you, like, you're the one that's going to live with what your decision is. She was like, do what you want to do. Because I wanted to drop out of college. And she was like, no, it's okay, don't drop out. Like, maybe stay, but don't feel the pressure to pick a particular course because you think it's what we would want. And I was so surprised by that because Damn. I had heard the typical things of parents being like, you must be a doctor, engineer, like, whatever it is. <laughs> All well-intentioned, right? But... Mm. I didn't have that. So I, I definitely want to maintain that approach of just kind of allowing my children to just blossom into the fullest versions of who they are. So mm -hmm. for me, some of the things, someone asked me this the other day, actually, like what kind of family traditions do I want to, um, to have? So like apart from, let's say like Christmas, like eating, or even day to day, like eating dinner around the table, I want to maintain open communication with my children. I think it's something that in my mind I'm, I'm so into, even in terms of the way I'm working to build my life, I'm like, I want to have the freedom to be present in a particular way with and for my children. Yeah. Um, 
I want to encourage learning and curiosity for them. I don't want them to feel like they need to fit into any particular box. So I think even in terms of transparency from my own life experience, like the way I'm going to talk to my daughter about how to navigate love and romance and sexuality, like it's going to be very different from what I experienced because I just feel like there's so much that they could glean from the stories that we tell, but we don't often get that yeah. as children. Like it's only when we're like, let's say 14, 16, <laughs> 18, that we start to see our parents as human. But I want to humanize myself to my children um, early on. Another mm. big thing for me, I don't want my identity That's to be good. wrapped up in my children. Um, Believe that. Sometimes when I say that, like people, I, I, I worry that like, prospective partners will think like, oh, she's just selfish, she doesn't really, she doesn't want to be a mum, but I'm like, no, like, I want my children to see a full example of womanhood outside of my role in relation to them as a mother. Um, I want to encourage learning, I think I said that already. Um, yeah, I think those are the main things for me. Those are some, those, as a father, those are some, those are some good foundations, man. Those are some things I'm trying to, we're trying to implement and mm. today she was uh what was she doing she went we went to the science museum and there was a part where she was playing with something yeah. and um as a parent you're standing watching but how can i put it how can i how can i put it you're two people watching your mm -hmm. child mm. i'm me mm -hmm. But then I'm the parent watching. Yes, yes. And as the parent watching, I am also uh, mm. watching with guiding eyes. Is she doing the right thing? Yes. Is, there some, is she sharing? Yeah. And then for, I think I was watching, then for a moment I was just like, stop. Stop this. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. just. Be here. Yeah, and just watch her play. Yeah. Um, and if she pours the water, she pours the water. If she cuts in and it wasn't her turn, she cut in and it wasn't her turn. Yeah. And it's this whole thing of um, understanding who is parenting your children. Okay. Is it, are you parenting mm -hmm. your children? Is your cultural upbringing parenting yeah. your children? Is your own individual experience parenting right now? Yeah. Is your fear parenting yeah. right now and it's like all these different parents can be parenting at one time and you've got to be able to um like you said stay there be in that moment yeah check who is right now that is parenting that child and, and how see. best it's actually gonna serve yeah them. because yeah. when you said culture i was thinking like there's so many things there's beautiful things about my culture but there are so many things when I speak about culture, there's like Nigerian culture, then there's also Black British culture, then there's mm, British culture, all these layers. I, my mind is always thinking like, okay, who's operating here? And how yeah. does it actually serve? Like even with my little cousins, sometimes like, and I'm, I'm very much a believer in, it's not a one size fits all, because there's three of them and they, they all have different personalities. Mm. So I always have to just be like, okay, what works for this one? And what needs to work for this one? And it requires patience and inten intentionality. And I think in hindsight, sometimes I'm just like, these are things we just couldn't be given just based on the climate with which our parents were raising us, like two jobs or even just dealing, just the climate that they were in, like who has time to pause and ask them to explain your feelings? Like they're trying to get you to bed because <laughs> it's, it's got like, they're trying to survive. Like I think when you're in survival mode, it's very, it, your parenting is going to be different. But you. you know, even with like one of my little cousins, I was just like, when she would cry, I would get frustrated because it's an inconvenience to me because we need to get on with this task that we're doing, like let's say homework, but you're crying. So I can now pause and be like, yeah. whatever it is that you intended to do, like there was so many times, because I was with them for six months in America last year, so, so many times where I'd have a deadline, let's say like I was posting content or something to do with work, and I'd just literally have to be like, it's gonna wait, nobody's gonna die if I don't post it or do whatever it is, and I'd have to pause and focus in on the moment and walk her through centering herself and, and not be like, okay, because it's an inconvenience to me, stop crying. Because I was saying to my friend the other day, like, of course we have a hard time mm. navigating particular emotions because we were told to swallow it so many times as kids. 
Like, if you were crying, if you felt, and it was all it's, not because the emotion was bad, it was probably just an inconvenience for the parent. Mm -hmm. Or they felt it was a sign of weakness that could get you taken advantage of. But it's mm -hmm. like, now, we don't know how to express ourselves. We struggle, like, in certain friendships, I'm like, why are you fighting with the emotion of love, Michelle? Like, when you want to cry, why are you sucking it up? Just cry. Mm -hmm. But we were told so many times to swallow it. And sometimes I just have to pause and be like, I can't tell her to, I have to pause and be like, okay, why are you crying? Okay, maybe if you can't articulate why yet, let's pause, let's do breathing exercises. And yes, that's like five minutes that I, I, I could be using to do. <laughs> yes. But she would probably grow up to be an adult who has a better chance at articulating how she feels or allowing herself to feel. So, yeah. 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 Facts, man. Facts. <laughs> um, you do a lot of uh, food blogger work and content creating. Um, who for, for? Let's start off. Who does your photography? Because uh, it friend, makes your food juicy. My friend, um, <laughs> Ayo, Ayo Kulu or um, mm. A and O Studios. Yes. Um, yeah, like that was even a non, a non negotiable because he. When I was doing wedding cakes, like he was the one that would photograph all of that stuff and food photography and portraiture, even product photography, like it's very different. But okay. what I appreciated about when we started working together was his willingness and even eagerness to kind of be like, okay, what's going to help this be a success? Like, I'm going to learn. What do we need to figure out? I would find articles and things and send and he would find things. And you kind of just, you want to work with someone who... Mm has the same work ethic, I think, but also um, just wants to see you win. Essentially, yeah. they're going to go above and beyond to, to make sure that happens. And I know a lot of people don't like to work with friends and family because it can be like, Ugh. but that's, that's my person. That's my brother. Like, he behaves <laughs> like a dad sometimes, like, literally. So, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's who does my photography. Who does your videography? Oh, it depends on the project. If it's like reels and stuff that I'm shooting, it's just me like at home figuring out how to do it. Um, I'll watch YouTube videos and watch like videographers explain how to do particular things and tips. Okay. Um, if it's for campaigns, typically I'll hire someone else. Mostly I work with Marv Brown. Yeah, Marv. Um, so yeah, but it just, I'm a, I'm a, I love excellence. I love things done well. So I will always just try to find like, who's, who's the best in that? Not even just the best in the field, but maybe who's the best for this type of work? Mm -hmm. Who can tell a story in the way that is fitting for this style, this story, this campaign? So, Definitely. yeah. Yeah. Um, you did, yeah, you mentioned campaigns. How does it work? You work with Tilda, Sainsbury's, like, how do they just see? How, the, let me... I'm, still, I'm still a baby in the influencer <laughs> game, and we're working with brand partnerships, but. And it, it works differently for different industries, okay. I would say, but also um, different countries. And, and oftentimes, like when I follow American stuff, I, just, I have to remind myself that look, like it's slightly different over here, mm. even in terms of numbers and what people charge. But um, yeah, sometimes I, I pitch to brands, and sometimes, okay. for the most part, people kind of just see. I find the more I show up online for my own stuff for free, for free, and build my audience and just mm -hmm. focus on that, like people kind of just end up finding you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With Sainsbury's, um, would you shocked when they heard it? I definitely was, because I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I don't even got 10K. Like, I'm still, I still don't have 10K. Like, I'm <laughs> on the way there, but I'm just like, how? I was confused, but mm. yeah. I was, I was, what did I they was say? Confused. <laughs> say that again? What did they say? Um... We've got this campaign coming, like there was a, ver a very detailed brief. So it was actually an agency that reached out on behalf of Sainsbury's. That's okay. typically how it also works sometimes. So um, PR companies, agencies, they will have partnerships with particular brands and then they will find influencers that fit, um, you know, the brief or whatever. So you know, they, they said, we love your work, love your style. Um, here's what we've got in mind in the brief. And I kind of just got to work. Like for me, I'm big on being able to visualize what the end goal is. So immediately I saw the brief, I was like, okay, before I even agree to it, can I visualize what the end result would be? Yeah. And then when I could, and when I could go on Pinterest and put things together, then I went back to them. Yeah. And how do you go about negotiating fees, etc.? Um, Especially if you're like, you know, like what you said, from your viewpoint, you might not think you're a big fish, 
Um, yeah. But they've actually seen they've seen something in you. Yeah. So how do you pr- uh, so press I, yourself appropriately? I, have, I know people say okay. So the recommended thing is to have like let's say based on your number of followers, you have a particular set amount, or um, for, for the scope of work, you have a, a set amount that you charge. I do a combination of the scope of work required plus the branding question. Like now, when smaller brands are approaching me, I might share it without charging. I might not put it on my feed, um, but I might share it without charging, let's say on my stories or whatever. But I think just being aware of, let's say what some of my peers who, yes, they have 12, 15, 20 times the size of followers, um, but knowing the standard of work I could deliver I charge based on that. Like, I really, really value my time and my creative output. Um, So it has to make sense for me. There's things where I'm just like, oh, it's not within. There was a second time that they they approached and they wanted a scope of work. And I said, look, this is, this is the figure. And it's, I don't, yes, I don't have 10K or above followers, but I think I was trying to do it. I was definitely... (laughs) Yeah, I was I was charging a really really <laughs> like a high rate um, for the scope of work that they wanted, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, we can't." And I said, "Okay, that's fine, but you're gonna have to adjust to kind of what the scope of work is." So yeah, typically I would usually go above what I want to make sure that I get what I actually want, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, just calculate like I count the cost because all too often, even when it's shooting my own stuff, I know how I can underestimate the amount of work involved and kind of feel burnt out in the end so I just it has to make sense for me numbers wise and also mm. for the people I'm working with I have to be able to cover their fees and pay yeah. them so true, yeah. true. Yeah. I like that I was watching um what's the name of this program it, it, it was a program on it was just on YouTube anyway um and it was a documentary about a gentleman who uh he was a serial creator he just creates mm. businesses and he got into creating programs. Okay. And his program landed on MTV. Oh, and wow. during that period of time it was at MTV, he could see the audience they could garner and the value it would bring yeah. to MTV. Yeah. So what he would be in the habit of doing is every single time he would, would renegotiate, he would re- renegotiate with a lower fee, but more, oh. equ- more equity every single time. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lower yeah. fee, more equity. Yeah. To the point where... Um, he almost pushed, and he he was creating such an audience that MTV would put him on every single day. Wow! And so the whole model or the whole value that MTV had was actually hinged on him. Wow! So it got to a point where he was like, you know what? I don't even, I don't even want you lot to produce it. I've got my own production company. Yeah. Who, who will make the program? I just need you to put it on the screen. Amazing! So it got to the point where he was just. He wanted to end and leave and do something else. Yeah. They said, brother, please, please. Wow. He said, you know what, I'll do another 250 episodes for, it was like 140 grand an episode. Yeah. Like so <clears throat> it was just this idea of um, knowing that value and knowing that worth that you bring yeah. to these big organizations. Because even though they're big brands, there's some, again, there's something that they have seen. And yes. there's something they have seen. They have to pay 100%. for what they have seen. Because 100%. that scene is making what you do like, bigger. So when I saw the Sainsbury's um, advert that you, you, you guys did, man, especially at the time, the climate of things, yeah. the DLM, it was, be- it was beautiful. It was beautifully shot, everything. Yeah, yeah, um, marketing job, yeah. Amazing. And they got to pay you for that. And it's reminding yeah. us as creators, we are not, no matter the, um, the weight of the company or the brand that comes, let that not cloud your, 100%. your you know, your thinking. And, yeah. your it's, and it's, it's this story that keeps going around. Like, I, I mean, I don't believe in being unreasonable with, okay, yeah, unreasonable true. varies from person to person, but it's like, it's not just the one-time thing. Like I had been building up storytelling skills before they approached me. So I knew what to research and what to look for and how to put together a mood board. And and without Marv asking, like I could say, these are what each of the shots should be. This is what the the storyboard should look like, right? Yeah, it's like, it's not just the product in the end. It's 
it's all the time and investment beforehand. And even just some things that I wasn't aware of, like by the time I spoke to people, they're like, no, you need to charge them for usage fees. Um, if they're gonna use your products, your photography, your videography elsewhere, like you can also charge for that. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you just, you just don't know. So yeah, <laughs> be included up, <laughs> be included up helps a lot. <laughs> like now I'm like, where do you want to use it? Okay, this is the fee. Yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> for everything. What are some of the downsides of doing all this stuff? Content creation and blogging. What is the hard parts of it that people don't normally see? Probably the time and effort that goes into it, into mastering the skill, into improving. Because we're in a climate, and rightly so, where things are constantly evolving and changing. Mm -hmm. So how you would be a content creator and a storyteller four years ago is completely different to now. And a lot of times those changes usually mean a faster pace. So I always say like, okay, before maybe you had 30 seconds to a minute to catch people's attention, right? Now it's, it's probably more similar to music. Like when I listen to a song, I'm just like in the first four, four, four to five seconds, I, like four, four, let me say four it's to true. 10 seconds. 10 is a long time. It's true. But those playlists on Apple Music where like they curate stuff and I just listen. I know if I'm gonna press skip or not. Before, let's say with IGTV or the way things work, like you had time to pull people in. Now, when I'm advising people when it comes to content creation, or even myself, I'm just like, you don't even have time. Three seconds, you need to catch them. Like, you, it's And it's like, yes, you're working to improve, but you're also feeding the monster. Like, the monster is constantly growing of the better you get at this, like, pulling people in in terms of three seconds or telling a four-minute story in one minute mm. or telling a one-minute story in 30 seconds, the app is probably going to figure out a way and evolve into, like, a shorter time frame that you need to be able to do that in. So it's... It's the constant evolution of your skills and the intentionality that you need to put into that mm -hmm. to make sure that you can keep people's attention. Um, so yeah, I would think it's mainly that. And then also being able to dictate your pace because, okay, so for now I've been doing a reel a day for like a challenge that I did. But for some people, like that's not sustainable long-term. I think, I can't remember if it was Abiola, she was sharing like in terms of the way the world has evolved now. So again, back to the whole thing of everything being really fast, like churning out a lot daily. Before, let's say it was magazines or TV shows, whatever. Like there would be time and space between the next. Yeah. Now it's almost like you kind of just keep, need to keep going and that's not sustainable. Yeah. So for me, probably something that's difficult is being able to not get so wrapped up in it and, and have your worth and your value and your identity so caught up in what you produce that you're not able to take a beat. You're not able to pause and say like, I need a time out mm -hmm. for my well-being, for my peace of mind, for stillness. Because I think creativity requires stillness. Yep. You have to have time where you're able to pause and be like, let me just take in, let me live, let me exist, let me breathe. Like much of the best things that I create generally, whether it's I'm writing, sharing, it comes through lived experience. Yeah. And if you don't take a beat, you can't have that lived experience. If you're constantly creating, <laughs> you don't have time to have the experience that's gonna fuel your creativity. So it's, yeah, yeah, that. No, it's true, I, I see that a lot in in the, the legacy artists that we have. So if you take, I don't know, like a Kano, um, <clears throat> I don't know, like a Retro 2, a Stormzy, you know, these people who a Dave, they mastered the art of, I will tell you when, yes. you're, gonna, when you're gonna get this. Yeah. And you will judge from the quality of the product, whether it was better that I stayed away, or if I just churned and churned and gave it to you. 100%. And so, again, those are reminders that you, as long as you're providing quality, yeah. you are the dictator. You can dictate to them the way it, it should be given. You know, because yeah. remember, you know, um, I think I think someone mentioned to me, oh, you know, try and maybe you should do events every month. I was like, child, every month. Where do I get to breathe? <laughs> where, where? You know, but if if you're if you produce quality and you deliver it to people on your own terms, then it creates more of a anticipation and a much more of a savouring um, experience. People are like, mm, I better taste this. I don't know when I'm going to get this 
you know, again, and I guess, like you said, in this microwave, mad, mad generation, especially on the simple thing of posting on your Instagram, um, it's that fine balance of giving too much, but holding some. Yes. Holding some back. Just, it's almost like a conveyor belt. It's like it, it, you, you, you buy into this idea that it needs to be something all the time, but it really doesn't. Even in terms of journaling, like I, I know I said, yes, every day I want to like journal or write something, but some days there's, not, there's nothing, there's what I felt, yes, the same as what I feel today, but there's nothing to write. And I can just take a beat and I pause. Um, but you have to be able to give yourself permission to do that, which circles back to what we were saying at the beginning. Like if your identity and your value is tied up in the numbers and mm. the validation and affirmation that comes from what you share, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to take a beat. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's so true. Oh, lastly, I want to look at faith. Um, there was something that, and you spoke in the past about um, your tussle with your faith, especially after your mum passed. Mm -hmm. And there was something I, I really related with that because in, in my church, in Jesus' house, mm -hmm. years ago, our pastor's wife passed away. Yeah. And I remember that day vividly because I was in the office. Oh, wow. You know, during the period of time when it was happening and, 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 and yeah. <clears throat> and I remember um, everyone being gathered into the office to say, oh, we need to pray for pastor. She's unwell, it's critical. And so we all went downstairs into the prayer room and we were praying. And I remember, <laughs> I remember praying, but I, and I remember people praying, but I wasn't praying mm. because I thought, Oh please, she's yeah. gonna, she's gonna be fine. Like, why? Are we, yeah. What, what what are we praying for? Like, if it's if it's got to her, it had to get through pasta, and if it got through pasta to get to her, um, you know, God's got it. So I remember just saying a little prayer of, you know, whatever God, you know, just heal her, she'll be fine. Mm. So when we found out she passed, I was like, huh? Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This it really it really to this day that was mm -hmm. this has been double digits years ago. But oh, wow. to this day it's created a uh what's the word? A complicated thing with a complex within mm -hmm. me around death, around illness, and it's made me Oh, I'm trying to get my words out here. It's made me unstable about this thing. Mm. And um, because, I, oh my God, I can't even get my words out tonight. Because what do I know to put my faith in if God's will mm. can be so different from it? So mm. I have faith you will do this but mm. in your mind, you're going to do that. So when that doesn't happen, how do I, I don't know where to place it anymore mm. because it could be anything. Mm. So it just means when I hear about anybody around me who has an illness or is there sickness, it makes me very unstable because mm. I don't know what's going to happen. With you, tell me about the journey of your faith from that period of time to where it is now. And, uh, <laughs> and the reason like, I ask, I love it because you, with this in particular, you, you know, you keep it so real and so honest. So yeah, yeah, and it's it's a hard. Um, <laughs> generally, I think I'm, I am that person that's just going to be like, if you ask me what color I'm just like, it's green, it's green. I can't like the effort that it takes to tell you that it's lilac. Like it's just, <laughs> it's not. But yeah. yeah. In saying that, it does bring about difficulties and I'll explain that in a minute. So I think if I was to try and summarize, so my mom was ill for two years, she had cancer, I think, yeah, two years. And then she passed away at the end of that period. And I think my, well, what did I say? My relationship with the church was already on rocky ground because of the church that I was in. It was, um, I think what we in hindsight would probably call spiritually abusive where even to the point like I was made to feel like me leaving the church 
would be the reason that my mum would pass away. It was like, oh, well, you can't, you want to leave. Like, I wanted to leave because I started to realise, oh, wait, this is not a healthy church, a healthy space to be in. And I was made to feel like if I left, she would die. Like, mm -hmm. I was the reason. I think even in terms of her cancer, I was told, like, because she had an argument with the pastor, this was her punishment. Like, that's why she had cancer. Yeah. So that's a lot, like... And I, I explain that to say, like, so many people have been and probably are sometimes still in similar situations where there isn't enough of a foundation biblically, um, theologically, like, you just, you don't know enough to combat what you're told mm -hmm. that has been so merged with culture and tradition that your foundation is already, it's already on rocky ground. Yeah. Like, it's already on rocky ground. So already... Traditionally, I had this picture of God as a God who is tit for tat. And not just from that church, but let's say like from churches growing up, Nigerian, where it's mm. not a Christian culture. It's a Christian <laughs> Nigerian culture. Yeah. Even Nigerian <laughs> Christian culture, right? So very much respect mm. and hierarchy. And even sometimes the pastor is the middleman between you and God. Mm. So yeah, I think... To summarize, for me, like, after her illness, I remember praying, like, before she passed away, I was like, God, like, you can't let me be the person whose mom passed away. I was like, wow. that can't be my testimony. I'm just telling you. Um, <laughs> and by the time she passed, I was like, oh, baby, that's what we're going to do? Okay. And my mind just couldn't, my mind, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't piece together the God that, I had grown up used to where there was always a testimony at the end. So the way I explain this to people is I always say like, I was always used to like Thanksgiving Sundays, like people come and testify, oh, I needed a job. I was jobless, God gave me a job. Um, my husband was sick, God healed him, right? There was always a tangible testimony. So now to, to try and look at a God and be like, oh, you're good, but she still passed away. I don't get that. Because then I didn't know what my prayer should be. And I remember speaking to like my big sis um fat morning and i was just like oh what am i supposed to pray like they're saying she's uh, she's in the stages of passing away mm. um which is something that i didn't even like there's so much that we're just not informed about when it comes to life and end of life and what that even looks like just physically um but like they knew the signs and they could see and they were explaining it so i was like oh should i still be praying for god to heal her mm. or should i just accept that she's gonna pass away and make the most of the time that I have with her. And she was just kind of like, do both. Like, you can do both. Like, both things can be true for you at the same time. So I was like, okay, I bet, cool. But then when she passed away, I was like, ooh, I was really hoping for the positive outcome and you didn't come through on that. So I think from then it was just a roller coaster of emotions. First of all, dealing with the whole situation with that abusive church, because there was so much more than what I shared. Mm. Then dealing with the fact that God didn't keep his promise and like now my mum was gone. Mm. What am I supposed to do with that? And even in Christian culture, it's often be strong. If you cry, it means that, I don't know, like, you're, like you can't be angry at God. You can't be upset. You can't question, like just be strong. Be strong in the Lord. She's in heaven. With, I'm just like, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. That's, that's not as comforting as you think it is. It's actually, mm. It feels abrasive, like, stop saying that to people. Um, let people show emotion, even as believers. Mm. But, um, yeah. yeah, from then, it was kind of like anger at God, like, well, how could he? It was not understanding, okay, this God that I had a concept of for so long, this doesn't make sense anymore. Um, why did this person get to survive, but my mum didn't? Mm. Um, so, yeah, it was just, it was a roller coaster, but I think, the breaking point probably came when it was just pure anger. Like, mm -hmm. and it was anger to the point that my anger and my pain became a magnet for everything else. Man. So you know how they say like misery loves company. This one, man, man was like, anger loves company. So my anger that I felt at God, which I didn't feel like I could express or share, because even culturally, mm. it's like, how can you, what do you mean you're angry at God? Do you want, do you want him to smite you down? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Um, <laughs> that anger became a magnet. So when I would see suffering in the world, whether mm. it's an advert Preach or I would hear something bad happen to someone, I'd be like, well, you see, God can't really care that much because, well, look, how could he? I went far, like, as in 
to the point that I speak openly. I'm just like, look, I went to the point of God doesn't exist. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Like, there's no way. Um, and even before I got to that point, what was even hard then? Because Christianity wasn't so much first a belief for me. It was more an identity. So I'm a Christian. Because I always say, like, again, it's the layers. With a lot of people who are ethnic minorities, we find community in places of worship. So a lot of not old people, like they might not be able to explain to you like things in the Bible, but that's where they meet their friends. Like they meet their friends at church. Like that's where that's where they form community. That's where that person is going to look after your child. And it was the same <laughs> for the rest of us younger people, where it's like, okay, a lot of my friends were just all Christians. Like. So then I'm going through a crisis of faith. Well, how do I navigate that when it comes to friendship? Because that's how you have people who are like, oh, they don't, they're not friends. They're going through a crisis of faith, but not friends with any of their friends anymore. They kind of isolate themselves because it's a hard conversation to have with people. Yes. But I'm thankful for the friends that I have because I was able to sit, well, my two best friends down and I was just like, look, this is where I'm at. I don't want you to stop talking about your faith. I don't want you to stop sharing your experience, what you're going through. If you want prayer, like ask for it, whatever it is. But this is where I'm at. Like, I don't know if I believe God exists. So went all the way there. If I can cut out all of the middle part. For the most part, I think I came back full circle in terms of, for me, I realized that it took as much effort based on the evidence that I saw, yeah. it took as much effort not to believe yeah. as it did to believe. Like, I was like, oh, wait, both require faith. I'm like, no, yeah. For me, based on, just even, like I said, I'm very much someone who likes things making sense. And I think that feels like the opposite of a lot of Christian culture where blind faith is encouraged. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, after my whole, he doesn't exist, I've looked at certain things in the world, I'm just like, no, there has to be a, there has to be a designer, there has to be a creator. Where I am now, in terms of that whole gap, and this is like eight years in the making. Mm. So it's like, yes, I believe, but in terms of what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of what that looks like in terms of understanding scripture and the weight that I want that to hold in my day-to-day -day life, I'm still on a journey of discovery and understanding. I said this to someone, my friend, again, same big sister the other day. I was like, no, actually, no. I said it to, I, I was talking to Susan, basically, talking about friendship, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, we were talking about some of the ways that I was showing up or not showing up. And I said, oh, you know, like, I was sharing with her that part of the reason that I feel like maybe I've been distant it's not because there's any love lost. It's because I feel like you're really strong in your faith and you're over there and I'm <laughs> struggling with my faith and I don't know how you will, how, how, how will you feel about that? Like when I ask questions, because sometimes I see people get shunned for asking questions. It's like that person just wants to sin anyway. So their question is not genuine questioning. <laughs> like they just want to live a life of record. They just want to be free. They just want to, yeah. it's like, of course people then end up walking away completely because where is the room for and if you don't have answers just say i don't know i don't have the answers because a lot of times we don't expect you to have the answers but anyway i came back and i said because she was asking like hey like what are some of your questions blah, blah blah and i just said you know what it's probably best suited for me to take some sort of short course like <laughs> theology science like whatever it is because i said to her i was listening to a talk by jordan peterson and i said he was going through like it's like a bible series and he said something and i was just like I don't know why I've never logically thought about it, but he was like, Genesis was written, but like, the person that wrote Genesis wasn't there in the beginning. And that sounds like, well, of course, but for me, it wasn't, but of course, I've never heard, there's no preacher yes. that will come on stage. Come on. Say, okay, maybe there might be, but I've not experienced any preacher that will come on stage and say the history of how Genesis was written or the fact that it's almost like to make sure that we believe in creation instead of evolution, mm. it's like, take it as fact. There's yes, no, yeah. like, there's no, <laughs> there's no question. I think, like, for me, I'm like, hold on, somebody wrote Genesis. <laughs> Even all the other books in the Bible, like, yes, okay, we believe, okay, like, the, the Christian's belief is that the Holy Spirit is the one that, like, you know, gave them revelation and they wrote, but it's just like, okay, 
Same way a lot of people now, they say that the Holy Spirit gave them revelation and that person was their wife and it turns out they're married to somebody else. Is there room for that human error mm. or that human input of, well, I have this worldview and when God speaks to me, I'm going to, what he speaks, I'm going to translate through my worldview because we do the same when we look at scriptures now and we're like, oh, um, it was a patriarchal culture or a heavily patriarchal culture and that influenced the way certain scriptures were, like, I don't hear that discourse in the church. So there's, there's not much room, mm -hmm. like literally. So where I am now, I'm just like, I just have so many questions. Mm -hmm. I have so many questions. And I want to make sure that to give something the weight of determining how I live my yeah. life on a day-to-day -day basis, I need to understand it. And yes. I need to know why. I, <laughs> Come I on. To, like, I'm just like, okay, for a lot of people, it's like I have a personal, tangible experience. And yes, there are moments where I can look in my life and be like, okay, I can see that as the goodness of God, even though it doesn't, to me, look like the goodness of God. Like I was sharing on a previous live, like, okay, my dad had a stroke. And the way that things happened a couple years ago, for me to be able to discover him whilst he was having the stroke, like, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Because I could have just literally continued about my day and he would have just continued bleeding into his brain. Mm. But it's like, okay, I can see the goodness of God in that way. That doesn't negate the questions that I still have. Come on. But I'm not afraid of questioning. Like, I'm, I'm just in that place where I'm just not afraid. And for a lot of people, it's kind of like, it's scary. Like, I know some people were asking my friends, like, is she still a question? And I'm just like, <laughs> Ask me the question. Like, if I want to share with you, like, I'll say, but start asking my first question. But literally, I'm just like, I'm in a space of questioning. There's a lot that I don't understand, and I'm not afraid of admitting that. And I don't believe that, like, my belief is God will meet me where I am, like, always. And I, I don't sit in the space of feeling judged anymore because of the questions that I have. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why I love that? Because um, I'm like you as well. I need to understand. Because if I don't understand, you will not fully have me. You'll have a part of me, but you won't fully have me. Yeah. And so when you tell me an idea, you may have asked the idea. You may have said the idea. You think it makes sense. Yeah. No. I need to understand this bit because yeah. once I understand it, you can never stop me. Yes. And I yeah. think with faith, um, just the idea of not knowing mm. has been painted with such a stigma that the people who come up with the answers don't even know. But they're afraid to say that. And it's like, in reality, I always sometimes look at it like this, that you know when people, it's, maybe it's a bad habit of mine, but in sermons, I find it difficult to listen to sermons sometimes because when people say, you know, God wouldn't want it like this, this, I'm like, how do you know that? Bro, bro. But how, how do you know? And so I sometimes think, him up, like, sitting up there, what does, I want to know what he thinks, you know? I want, I want to know what you think on George Floyd, that situation that happened there. What do you person not i have to dig through the scriptures to find it and what do you personally feel what do you think about homosexuality you not the scripture you as, as a god as a just as you know in you what do you yeah. think and i think these questions that we have they're not they're not malicious they're they're just questions to come to a concrete understanding that, like you said, if I'm going to base my whole life on this, at least let me understand what it is. And I think it's a, it's a constant journey of saying, God, I don't understand this here. Could you explain it in a way that you know I would understand? Yeah. Through whatever means. A friend, conversation, scripture. And, and if you don't know, if, if you are the person who has someone in your life who is in a crisis of faith of sorts. But do you know, but it's not even a crisis of faith. Yeah. It's just the journey. Well, it, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Because that, the crisis yeah. of, uh, having a, this idea of crisis of faith makes yeah. it seem like everybody will get to a place where there's a utopian idea of Christianity mm. where nothing 
shakes their boat. Yeah. But if Jesus is there telling me, uh, why have you forsaken me? What the heck? Yeah. You. Yeah. You, Jesus, are telling... I say, so, I don't think it's ever a crisis. I just think, this is... You're asking me to mm -hmm. believe in someone I've never seen in my life. Me, personally. Some people have seen God. They've seen angels. Yeah. Me, yeah. I have never seen God in my life. Yeah. So I'm, whole, I'm, I'm in totality, I'm giving my life to a idea hmm. that has been sold to me. It's been presented yeah. to me. Yeah. There's going to be holes in that. There's going to be holes in, and, and you have to know, I always think of it like, like you talked about Genesis. Mm. So, you're so what you're telling me, the world was made in seven days. Mm. Boom, 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 got rested on the seventh day. Da, da, da. But I've never seen this person. Mm. So if you're coming from never believing to believing, there is going to be a transition between yeah. the reality I know yeah. and the new reality you're telling me. Yeah. There's going to be a, something in that crossover. Yeah. Yeah. Where it doesn't always link. Yeah. And I think it's just like you, you said, God will meet, God meet me, I believe, but help my unbelief. There's some areas where I'm just like... That's the only thing I've been able to pray for the past year. And that it, feels, whenever I pray it, it feels so vulnerable. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I just pray it and I literally cry. Because like, I'm just like, it almost feels like, because that was such a huge part of my life for so long, I'm just mm. like, God, like... Just like make it go away, like help my unbelief. <laughs> like, like, and I, it's, it's my frustration that spurs that sometimes more than even a desire to quote unquote be with him or be intimate with him. And I'm just like, okay, that's even what you, what you just want to be able to just be with your friends again. And you all have to like, no, like, yeah, even that. But literally that is the only prayer that I've for a year been able to pray, like help my unbelief. like you're going to have to meet me somewhere. Like, mm. I, I don't understand this phase. Mm. And it affects so much of life. If I'm, it affects wow. So much, like, just on a practical level, like dating, I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, like... I look for a good Christian man. Okay, but technically, mm. you ain't... I'm like, what do, what do we do? So I'm just, I'm just going to take a break. I'm just going to take a break. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And I think... Oh, I feel... I feel God knows our hearts, man. I feel mm -hmm. he knows... I believe he knows the real us. Mm -hmm. Like... To ask that ask these questions and where they come from and yeah. what we're seeking from them. And I don't think, you know, sometimes people's fear of going into that idea of questioning him mm. is that he would never ever want us to. Mm. So don't 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 well, question yeah. God. He'll just get angry. Yeah. But that's like saying you have a father who never wants you to answer, ask any questions. And, yeah. But I feel if you want me to come over to here and this side, and you're telling me this side is better and this is the way and I should choose life over here, I'm sure he'd want you to understand. He'd want you to get who he is, not who we've been taught he is, because I really that's think... The thing. yeah. And that's why some people, like, for me, I struggle with the Bible sometimes because I don't understand... Um, I don't understand what it's saying. What are you saying? Mm. Because I'm, tr I'm trying to understand what he's saying. Mm. And sometimes it feels like these words are just getting in the way. Like, who's that? Who's David? Moses? Yeah, but it's not God. So all this stuff that I'm reading, I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. But what are you saying? So, uh, look. And even the validity, <laughs> like, it feels almost blasphemous like when I bring it up or when I say it but I'm just mm. like do we understand that like if I sat here and I said to Deborah 
hit, um, um, I, verbatim, I said to her, write this, dum, 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 dum. Do you know that in what she writes versus what I said, there would be a slight yeah. difference, but there's not a willingness. Sorry, the parallel there is in terms of all the translations that we have, all of the things that have been edited, removed. And when you say that, you sound like this person that is just trying to be like, stubborn unnecessarily because I've seen it happen. I've seen people become shunned for questioning things like this. And it's like, I'm not even saying that it's not true. I'm not saying it's not truth, but can you at least give me, mm, that just, is... just ag agree with me and say yeah. that there's a possibility <laughs> that based on whatever motives King James or whoever else had, things might have been altered from Right, like, or, or or altered to suit whatever it was that they wanted to put across. And it sounds like I'm just like, look, drink weed and have crystals. <laughs> like when I say stuff, like, like, like it's almost like you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. But no, you know what? Thank you for sharing that, I, I, and that's why I said the journey because mm. I really think this is a journey of. Um, yeah, it's just a journey, man, of, of faith. And it's not to say we don't believe and it's not to say that, yeah. um, you know, God, whatever. It, it's just, it's a desire for authenticity and sincerity in your faith. Yes. That is, that's what we're chasing. So yeah. when I sing those songs, yes, I really mean them with my heart. A lot of times I worship now with where I am, like I will still like, you know, like, okay, great, there's progress. I can go to worship services and go to church. Mm. But sometimes I'm just, I'm not singing. Again, I'm not the just sitting down. Bubble, but I'm just like, I can't, <laughs> I can't willingly sing that because I don't believe that right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, yeah. you are my everything. And you're like, I'm not going I've still got yeah. things that I'm dealing with. And, and I think that, again, this is why I don't think it's a crisis. That yeah. is the sincerity. I, mm. I really believe. I feel, I believe, he would rather you sit down mm. in the middle of worship and conversate with him about mm. why I don't think I can sing. I've done that many times. Lord, right. and I'd be, and then I would, I think I'd be, I'd stop and I'd be like, let me sit my ass down. Yeah. I know. I'm not sure what are you saying? And people <laughs> couldn't understand when I took a break from leading worship. Yeah. And it was just like, no, like, there's this very much like sing through sing through it to believe and I just said like there's no way I know very much like even for me to say things to my friends mm. if it's not synced with what I feel in my heart I can't say it I can't say I love you and I like it's not no um so when it came to leading worship I was like there's no way I can get up get up there there's no way Main for stage. me for some people it works it's a way like and, and I do get it sometimes you can it's a way of singing your, it's like similar to Psalms when we read, it, we like, I command my body, my, like, my soul, praise the Lord, like call. But you also have to know when. <laughs> it's just off. It, it's just off. It's not, there's no integrity behind what you're doing. Yeah. You, you kind of, yeah. Mm. Integrity, yeah. That integrity, that authenticity of faith is, in, is important. And I, I, that's why, you know, that scripture of, um, I believe, and but help my unbelief is it's not talked about a lot, but it's one of the most sincere and honest prayers. Do you know what I'm saying? He said, I, I believe in my head, mm. but I help my unbelief. There's yeah. parts of me that don't feel you can heal my daughter. There's parts yeah. of me that doubt you say who you are. There's parts of me that have seen other people being healed. And that, so I, I hear what you're saying. But could you just help the part of me that is struggling? And that's, man, if that ain't a Christian, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but unbelief <laughs> is, 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 is mocked or it's shunned. Mm, yeah. Like, we try to push it to the side. Like, I always laugh. Like, some people are like, I guess with Thomas, he went on to be one of, yeah. I, I can't remember in terms of how many churches, but we still call him Doubting Thomas. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like a thing, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's the smear or the thing of shame, like, oh, you don't believe, you questioned. Mm. And it's just like, yo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, man, 
Oh, I don't know. This it's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. It's been great. <laughs> Wow, yeah. Um, in all in all, you know, like, I always keep referring to Jamal, like, yeah. Jamal Edwards passing, like, he, um, big up to Jamal every day, like, man, you know, oh, God, it's Jamal, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, after, after him, after him passing, you know, the, the testimonies that people had and, and yeah and it, they were all the same hmm. they were all of the experiences that people had had with him yeah and how they had touched him and and i want you know i've, I've learned that legacy is not necessarily what you are trying to intentionally put in the world yeah it's just what's left in people's hearts Mm. who had had interactions with you yeah. so for you what would you like to be left in their hearts you don't have no control over that but what would you like to when your time has to go and you've got to go on what would you like to be left in people's hearts probably that i was intentional in caring for them mm. and that's something i'm like definitely trying to work on um beyond what's comfortable for me, beyond what comes naturally. Because in terms of hosting and yeah, like I'm, I can do that. I can make you feel catered to in my space, but I guess, yeah, showing up for my people, um, I would, I would want that to be left in their hearts. Um, And I guess I would love to be remembered as someone who was intentional about Mm. honestly and authentically navigating this thing called life like the ups the downs the triumphs like I I want people to to see that but also for that to be a trigger for them to be more willing to really just be themselves like be who you are like there is no template that we're here to to follow and to be like literally we're more alike than we are different and i hope what i do and what i share and how open i am and it's just an encouragement to be you like and to savor this thing called life like i remember watching soul (laughs) and who who like i cried like (laughs) what like I had to pause the film. Uh-huh. That film was a crazy. <gasps> and it was a quote. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to remember how to say it word for word, but it was the, the older, the jazz singer, and she was saying to him, you know, like the story of the fish. What did the fish? I think the fish was trying to see. I don't know if it was water or something, but basically the irony was that obviously, like fish live in water, but was chasing this experienced so much that it missed the fact that it was it was in the ocean like it was actually there and I think day to day I'm just trying to remind people just there's beauty in the here and now like there's so much of our focus yes is the afterlife and even like with Christians sometimes I'm just like yes like look yes 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 110% there's that but the here the now the relationships you have with people the self actualization that just this beautiful mess called life is worth leaning into and it's worth living mm. and I just I want to remind people of that yeah. in everything that I do leaning yeah. into I like that yeah. Michelle <laughs> <laughs> this was great hour and a half I didn't know it was I didn't know. I d- I d- I'm looking, I'm like, what, how? Yeah, no, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Like, A yeah. total pleasure, yeah. man. A total pleasure. I was exhausted today, but I wanted to do this. Oh. Um, yeah, man, big up to you, man. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And you, big up to you for pivoting, for <laughs> the conversations, literally, like, even if you don't hear it on a day-to-day basis, because mm. I think sometimes we do forget to kind of give flowers to people like in the here and now but I'm sure like the conversations that you've had with multiple people it's just it's been transformative for them in some way like you will never know 
the moments where people will be, they will need to make a decision or they'll need to alter their actions and they'll think back to a conversation that you've had with someone, yeah. what you shared. So yeah, kudos to you for pivoting and for showing up consistently and just, just doing what you do. Thank like, you. It's transforming people's lives even without you always hearing and knowing that. So yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I'm wishing you all the best. Have you got anything coming up that you want us to know? Oh, people just go ahead to keep those eyes peeled. Definitely. <laughs> I'm taking the leap into, um, apart from supper clubs this year, e-commerce and just launching some of my own stuff. So like, okay, y'all keep those eyes peeled. Um, I'm excited. Um, and I hope it serves people in the way that I want it to. So, yeah. Wonderful. Guys, yeah. please make sure you follow Michelle. Um, turn on those notifications and stay tuned. Yes. Um, yes, yes. But, also, please, in the comments section, let us know how you have found the conversation. Um, she's yeah. been so open and just so transparent, which, is, which I've found in these conversations is always a blessing. The more yeah. open people can be, yeah. the more richness comes from it. And that's why by the end of it, nobody, rarely anybody uses their pass card. You didn't use your, <laughs> use your pass I card. I did. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> they forget that they have a pass card because they're being so... Yeah. open and it's such a selfless thing so I, I appreciate it yeah, oh, that's really, amazing. Really wow <laughs> <laughs> that's great no yeah 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 wow I forgot that <laughs> so um, we always say anybody that comes on here it's intentional because yeah. uh, we see what you do and we love what you do so just know you have a family over here and uh, okay. anything that you're doing we're on it to just support and just Thank there's you. things that you need us to push out yeah. Um, we'll promote, please send it our way because that's just what we want to do. Man. I appreciate that. Thank no you. Worries. No worries. Thank, you, thank you, thank you. Well, wishing you a great evening, man. And um, yeah, have a great one, man. And you too. Hopefully, you get some rest and. Yes, I will. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank man. you so much for having me. No worries. Take Bye. care. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us with 21 Questions with Michelle Davies. Um, Beautiful, beautiful. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, please leave in the comment section how you found it. If this is your first one ever, um, click the link in our bio, uh, go to our YouTube, you can watch all the other ones that we've done. Or you can just go onto the IGTV you can watch about 75, I think we've got 75 episodes, different people from different backgrounds and um, just sharing their story and, and unpack, unpacking their journey. Um, we do events we'd love to see you at one of our live events if you would love to come down we do this but in live person click the link in our bio press sign up to priority tickets so that you can get priority tickets 30 minutes before everybody else we'd love to have you down um, and then lastly follow us man follow us press follow uh, make sure you know what we're doing go into the YouTube subscribe we just want you to we just want you to be able to get the richness of these conversations. That's all it is, really. That's what I'm asking you. Um, get into their conversations. Learn from all these different people we've spoken to and see how it applies to your own personal life. That's why we just want you to subscribe, follow, follow, follow. But thank you for today. If you came halfway through and you didn't catch anything, don't worry. As soon as this finishes, it's going to be live um, on our front page. So thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. We're going to be back next week, uh, Thursday. 9 p.m. for another 21 questions episode. Make sure you follow us so you know when uh, we announce the guest. Until then, take care. My name is Icy. I'm the host and the founder of The Sit Down. And it's great to have you. Yeah? Take care. God bless. <laughs>